Good evening, it's Jeremy. It's Thursday, June the 23rd, and I'm just looking at my GOES 16 satellite dish. And what I want to do is, um, I was so excited receiving images from uh, the GOES satellite, like at 42,000 kilometers out in space, I thought, wouldn't it be nice to receive other signals, perhaps pulsars or other form of galactic signals? So I was thinking of using the uh, GOES equipment, the dish, and the uh, LNA bandpass filter uh, to receive. I guess starting off, I was thinking of trying to receive the hydrogen line at 1.4 gigahertz. So the first thing I did is I, uh, I swept the dish. I've got a nano VNA, which is down here. And the nano VNA works up to about one point, at least my version of it works up to 1.5 gigahertz. So here I'm sweeping from one gigahertz to 1.5 gigahertz. And I've moved the marker uh, to 1.4, um, 1.42 uh, gigahertz, which is the frequency of the hydrogen line. And you can see that the VSWR is not all that bad. It's about four, it's not great, but you can see some dips there in the VSWR. So I'm hoping I'll be able to use the dish. Maybe I can adjust the feed horn, feed horn in some way. Uh, anyways, I'm hoping I can use the dish um, to receive the hydrogen. 1.4 gigs. Now as far as the amplifier goes, we have to look at that. So here is the, um, that's the GO-16 Sawbird. It's a surface acoustic wave bandpass filter and low noise amplifier designed for the GO signal. And what I'm doing is I'm connecting it directly to my Signal Hound Spectrum Analyzer. And I've just got a little antenna here. I'm using the white wideband white noise on the receiver input as kind of like a sweeping signal to test the amplifier. So here, this is the uh, spike software that goes with the signal hound. Here we can see the pass band of the Sawbird and it starts around 1.6 gigs and goes to, um, let's say 1.75 gigs, something like that in that area. Unfortunately down here at 1.42, it doesn't work. So I guess the bottom line then is the Sawbird for the goes I can't use. I noticed online that there was a Sawbird designed specifically for the hydrogen line at 1.42 gigahertz, so I ordered that one. Anyways, this just tells me the bandpass of the uh, Go Sawbird, which is out of range for the uh, hydrogen line. Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Friday, June the 24th, and I'm just down at Harbor Front here, Toronto Harbor Front. Gorgeous view, looking at all the boats, and I'm looking at the clear sky. So what I've been trying to do recently is I had um, so much excitement receiving the signals from the GOES-16 satellite. I thought to myself, wouldn't it be interesting to see if I could receive other signals from space? You know, uh, signals from planets, for instance, uh, pulsars and stuff like that. So I did, um, I did some research on, um, on the internet and uh, it turns out that there's a thing called the hydrogen line which uh, comes about, I guess, way back when there was the Big Bang and uh, the universe is filled with hydrogen and the hydrogen, the electrons, the one electron changes its spin state from being parallel to the proton to being anti-parallel. And apparently when it changes state, which doesn't happen too often, uh, it emits a frequency of 1.42 uh, gigahertz. So. It turns out that I've been using SDR Angel, which is a software defined radio uh, receiver program, which is fantastic. And it has a plugin called Radio Astronomy. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting to start playing with that? So what I've got here is I've got my laptop, Windows 10 laptop, running SDR Angel, and I'm looking at the receive spectrum, which doesn't show too much. The blue line here is the reference line for 1420. Now I've got over here, I've got an RTL SDR version two. Um, and I've got a simple antenna here, probably not very good for receiving the signals from space, but it's a V-dipole, so I set it up for 120 degrees, and uh, if you work out, um, there's Psychos, if you work out the dimensions at 1.4 gigs, it turns out that each element will be a wavelength over 4, so that would be 5.3 centimeters, so I've element up for 5.3 centimeters. So I'm going to switch over to Camtasia and we're going to see what uh, what we're seeing. Okay, so I'm in Camtasia right now. So let's look at um, let's look at SDR Angel here.
This is the new uh, version of SDR Angel. Before the windows had fixed positions, but now you can move them anywhere, which is really, really a good feature. So let's look at the device. I'm set up for the RTL SDR. I'm using version two. Uh, the accuracy on the version two is pretty good. So the uh, PPM, the error is at zero. And I've got it at 2.4 mega samples per second. And I got it at a full gain here, 40.2. Um, what else here? So there's a the frequency of the hydrogen line, 1.420405 gigahertz. Okay, so I've got that running now. And this is the radio astronomy plugin. This is the spectral um, display here. So here's the radio astronomy plugin. So I've got it going. I'm not familiar with it. This is the first time I've looked at it, but I just thought I'd come down here and play with it. Because I was really inspired by watching the various YouTube videos on the hydrogen line. So Right now, the RTL has nothing on the input, so there's a spectrum. It's not seeing it. This is the, the blue is the reference line for 1420 megahertz or 1.4 gigs. I'm going to put a 50 ohm termination on the RTL. See that if that does anything. You get a bit of a line here uh, over here with 14 with the 50 ohm termination. You see a line coming up. Not too sure what that is. It's at uh, 1.420.79. Okay, so that could be the hydrogen line shifted in some way, maybe a Doppler shift, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to take that off. And now I'm going to put the um, V dipole on, see what we get. Okay, so now I'm connecting the V dipole. And let's see. Okay, so now I'm getting a fairly strong line now at uh, 1420.79. That's for the V-dipole. Let's move the V-dipole around, see if that does anything. So I'm moving it up. Yep. So there's a, a big difference there. And I move it around. Now I'm aiming the V-dipole at the sun. So I see two peaks there. Again, it's the first time I'm working with this, so I'm not too sure what I'm looking at. Let's look at the radio spectrometer down here. Let's see what's going on down there. So I'm moving the V-dipole. So it seems to move around a fair amount depending on where it's um, where it's at. Okay, well that's just a brief look at um, SDR Angel, the radio astronomy plugin. As I said, this is my first uh, shot at it. I've ordered a um, bandpass filter uh, low noise amplifier for 1420, so that should be here in another week. And I'm going to connect that up to my dish and then use the program with the dish to see what we can receive. So that should be in about a week from now.